Today I'll be reviewing this lens here. This is the 17 to 70 millimeters f 2.8 lens from Tamron. Now, this is not a very, very new lens, but for the purpose of the XF mount, it is a new lens itself. Just launched, I believe, a month or two back for the XF mount. So today's review will take a look at its performance and how does it compare to the 1655 f 2.8 from Fuji itself. Now, let's take a look at this lens and see what does it deliver and is it worth it for a third party zoom lens. Now before we start, let's take a look at some photos shot with this lens. I did four photo shoots and I think uh, it will help you understand what this lens can do for the purpose of portraiture. I'm Richard, welcome to ZP Productions. This is the Tamron 17 to 70 mm f2.8 review. Now, this lens is provided to me by Tamron Singapore for the purpose of review, so uh, I have to return it soon. Now, this lens itself is a really nice lens all around. This is a zoom lens, uh, so don't expect awesome bokeh or very shallow depth of field or extremely, extremely sharp because those usually belong to prime lenses. What this gives you is a very nice range of 17 to 70 millimeters, which equates to about 26 all the way to 105 millimeters if you convert it to full frame focal length. And this is a very versatile focal length for the purpose of you know doing things like event shoots, coverages, traveling. Now, the nice part of course is that this is a f2.8 lens given the range and it's actually really light and small. And this is, I believe, one of the largest selling points for this lens itself. So let's take a look at its physical qualities. Then we'll talk a little bit about its handling, usage, autofocus and stuff. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit on the image quality and how does it stack up to the 16 to 55 millimeters. Now, firstly, I would say as in terms of build quality, this is a very, very simple lens, a zoom ring with extended barrel. The barrel doesn't rotate. Uh, I believe this is, let's see, a 67 millimeters front cap that doesn't rotate. Of course, then there is the rear mount, nothing special there. The lens uses the RXD motor and is relatively silent to focus and quick to focus. It has VC vibration compensation, uh, which means that it has image stabilization within the lens itself. If you are using a Fuji camera, some of the cameras do not have internal IBs or in-body image stabilization. So the VC will help. One of the things I'll say about this lens is that it's a very simple lens. There is no additional switches other than the extending barrel, very simple, very slick, very clean. And it is also really light at 580 grams with the hood and the caps. Now this is a good 200 plus grams lighter than the version from uh, Fuji itself. This Fuji's version, I believe is about 820 grams. So this is a good 200 plus grams lighter and it still extends further even though it loses one millimeters on its wide end. So overall, I think the build, construction, weight, I think is quite good, especially for a lens of its class. Now let's take a look at its performance in the field. Now firstly, autofocus wise, now the lens autofocus is pretty quick. You know, uh, if you are talking about having at a single focal length and then focusing subjects, they are moving around. However, if you are zooming in and out, it does defocus quite significantly as you can see in this video here. Now I did notice that even the 1635 does it a little bit, but the Tamron here does it a lot more. So yes, on the XH2S, it does autofocus very quick, but just not if you are focusing and zooming together, um, you have to let the lens compensate for the focus before carrying on. That's something to note for this autofocus. And that, uh, that is the only downside of autofocus, it's quite sharp, 
quite accurate and um, I didn't have any issues in the field itself, especially for portraiture itself. Speaking of that, I did about four portraits with it. Uh, the miss rate is really low. I don't think I have any significant complaints about the autofocus accuracy with this lens for the purpose of portraits. Now, that being said, let's talk about image quality. And I'll say as straight up, without you know going too much of it, the image quality of this lens is slightly better than the one by Fuji itself. Because, you know, uh, it's really hard to say how sharp a lens is and I really cannot compare it to a prime lens, which is what I usually use. So the only other lens that I could compare it now to really make a judgment whether this is a better lens or not is the 16-35 here. And in the wide end, in the narrow end, is sharper in the center, also sharper at the side. In fact, its side is uh, significantly sharper than the older Fuji lens itself. So I'll say as optically, this is a very, very nice lens and you know, just for optical performance, for sharpness at least, it is a better lens. Now, when you look at the night scene, however, you'll notice that this lens does have a bit of blooming, especially on the light tubes themselves. Now, this is something that the, of course, uh, Fuji lens do not exhibit as much. Uh, so if you are shooting into very bright light, that's something to note. But still, this lens is sharper, so that's something. Uh, there is a little bit of coma, it means the lights have some weird shape at the edge and corners and that is to be expected because I believe this lens was not designed to be fully corrected in those cases. So, I would say as optically so far, uh, for the purpose of you know using this lens normally, the 17 to 70 is a sharper and overall uh, optically better lens than the Fuji itself. So, the thing is, um, how does it perform in the actual real world field when I do portraiture? I'll say as great. You can see I have done four portraits of it. Take a look at the shots. I think it looks pretty decent. Pretty much I don't think there is any complaints when it comes to image quality of this lens in the field for the purpose of portrait. So I'm very happy with it. Be in the center of center, the focus, the sharpness is very consistent. And if you are using it for the purpose like weddings and stuff. I think this is as good as it gets today for the purpose of a Fuji system and a zoom lens. Now, is there any downside to this lens if you ask me? Um, really, the only downside to this lens is that awkward uh, shifting when you are zooming itself and that can be quite distracting in addition to, you know, if you are slightly zooming and trying to focus, you will get a few missed shots. So now it goes to the very, very last part and this is something I usually don't cover as much and that's for purpose of video. Now, power focus, obviously it's not power focus. As you turn the focus zoom, it just goes out of focus and then you can see compensating, so it's not power focus. But in terms of focus breathing, it is controlled, be it at the wide end or the more narrow end. I noticed that there is probably some very slight one, but it is well controlled and if you are doing focus pulling and getting that out of focus to in focus effect, I think the Tamron lens will work out pretty nicely. Now, into the very last part, is the Tamron lens worth it? Now, firstly, the exact price, I'll put it on the screen. I'll put the USD price first, followed by the Singapore price. Uh, definitely, this lens is more affordable, lighter than the Fuji lens itself. Overall, is this lens worth it? I'll say yes, this lens is definitely worth it. At least it's more worth than getting the Fuji itself. This is longer. It is uh, better optically and the only really only downside to it is that out of focus issue when you are zooming around that is really the only problem and if you ask me as long as you know that it is there I think you could easily manage it or at least take a few shots to capture the right moment you want and making sure you check your shots a little bit now and then now um, I will not say that this is the best lens in the world. Definitely as a zoom lens, I have seen better zoom lens, but for its price, compared to the Fuji, compared to any first party zoom lens, I think this is probably as good as it gets. And if you are a Fuji user, this is probably the lens I will recommend if you are looking for a standard zoom for the purpose of uh, taking photos or even taking videos because the focus breathing here is very nicely controlled. That's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.